there. I'm Jamie McGonagall with Ocala Equine Healing, and today is Tuesday, June 28th. The footage you're about to see in this video was filmed on May 8th, 2022. If you're wondering why has it taken so long for this footage to get produced and get released, I have some simple answers for you. The main answer is that over the past few months I've been trying to discern the instructions from Wiser Minds Above, from the Guardian Angels who are responsible for this kind of channeling, how they want this work to continue to be shared. If they want to continue to share it over YouTube, if they want to share it over some other um, form of communication, and how best I should go about that. Part of the reason for that discernment is that it's been a financially challenging year personally for uh, me on the channeling end. It's also been a challenging year for our planet and so I spend a lot of time asking the guardian angels how best to use the gifts and techniques that I've spent so much of my life practicing in order to be most of service for our world and for the other worlds that we interact with. I've considered making a Patreon page so that you as viewers would be able to have some kind of membership and be able to get regular access to my work. Uh, I'm concerned about financial incentive becoming something that would cheapen the process. Uh, so feel free to leave comments about your feelings about Patreon, or your, about your feelings about membership in general. What I'm going to do for today's video, after much <laughs> discernment and much questioning is I'm just going to leave my Venmo information in the description underneath the video. If you feel like uh, this channeling work is something that's valuable to you, if it's something that has uh, influenced your life, has made a positive difference in the way that you see the world, please feel free to leave a donation in that Venmo account and that will be how I can start to gauge how valuable this work is before going through the process of setting up a Patreon so I don't waste their time, so I don't waste uh, my own time, so I don't waste your time. So for today, this video is freely available. I don't know how long uh, that will continue to be possible. don't know how long it will continue to be possible to make and produce these videos with the time that I have. Obviously, your responses to this video will help the guardian angels get a better feel about um, how valuable this work is in the world, how valuable this work is to the viewers that it's currently available to, and we'll be able to understand more from there and we'll be able to figure it out as we go. <laughs> As always, if you have personal challenges or personal questions that don't get addressed in these videos or that um, you feel like you would like to have some breakthrough on, you're always welcome to contact me for a personal healing session. I facilitate healing sessions by phone for clients all over the world. You can go to my website, ocalaequinehealing.com, and you can request a private session from there, and then we can see if what I have to offer in the healing practice practice uh, is something that is relevant to the issues that you're experiencing or relevant to your belief system. I think that's a long enough explanation and you've already waited long enough <laughs> for this footage. So please enjoy. Please feel free to ask questions in the comments. Please feel free to uh, let me know what kind of questions you have for the guardian angels. And maybe in the next video, when we have a chance to sit down and film again, and then when we have a chance to do all the video editing work that goes into producing work like this, maybe, maybe your questions will get to be on the screen. Until then, I hope the angels' messages in this video are as inspiring to you as they have been to me. Hi friends, today is Sunday, May 8th, 2022. I'm Jamie McGonagall with Ocala Equine Healing and we are back again today with another excellent question asked by one of the clients of the healing practice that felt like it would be something useful to be shared with a wider audience.
As you might already know, the majority of my practice is based around uh, equine athletes, horses who are competing, horses who are racing, but I also do have human clients as well, and every so often one of them asks really, really good questions for the guardian angels to answer. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to try to connect up to guardian angels who are responsible for either a group that's related to the question itself, a group that's related to the client who asked the question, some group of higher powers who might be willing to give answers to this question in such a way as to help all of us get closer and closer to the destinies that we are here to accomplish in this life. Just a reminder that when I do this channeling work, if I'm doing it well, my eyes will move around in my head, my breathing patterns will change, I might yawn, I might cough, I might make other body signals that show up on film. If those kinds of signals are things that really throw you off or that make you very uncomfortable or very afraid, this might not be the kind of channeling work that you are uh, interested in watching. However, if you feel like you can work through those things, I highly recommend that you stick around and get some answers to some big questions. With all of that being explained, I'm going to try to present the series of questions from this particular client to the higher powers. We're going to see if anyone up there is interested in answering all or part of the series of questions. And then I'm going to try to translate what they say as clearly as possible, bearing in mind that I might have to back up and correct myself. I might have to go back. I might have to rework through parts of it because of my translation. Today's series of questions comes from a client who we're going to refer to as C. She's one of the favorite clients of the healing practice. And she asks, I would love to ask the angels about the violence on this planet. What is its source? Why does it seek to perpetuate itself? Are we all violent and that's why we're grouped together here? If we have some degree of violence within us, how can we move past it? So we're going to start to send that series of questions up through the dimensional levels that we're able to reach through today. We're going to try to find a group of guardian angels who's interested in answering that question. And there is a group way up there that we can kind of faintly hear if we really get quiet and we really stretch the energy body up not with arrogance, but with humility. And it seems to be a group who is responsible for what we might think of as justice, who's responsible for having things, um, it's not quite turn out the way they're supposed to turn out, but it's turned out in a way that is fair. It might be a group who is related to the process of allocating karma in a fair and just way, which is something that we've worked with before with a number of clients and in previous videos. And so that's the group we're going to try to reach through and not only to that first layer of that group, that first series of vibrations that we're able to connect with, we're going to try to get to higher and higher and higher series of this same group, reaching through to the higher souls, the responsible guardian angels, which are two different factions, but just to clarify, they are higher vibrations in the first group of that genre that we're able to get to today. And they're the ones we're going to present this series of questions to. And so we're here today to get some answers about violence and the way that it is perpetuated on this planet. What is the source of the violence on this planet? Now, the first thing that the guardian angels want to start to clarify is what we are defining as violence. Because violence, they're saying, I'm just going to try and translate, has different um, perspectives. There is the perspective of the presence or presences who is perpetuating the violence, the one who is... Um, acting the violence out, and there are also the perspectives 
of the witnesses of the violence, either the presences who are receiving the violence directly, the presences who um, are witnessing the violence from a third party, standing to the side. There we go. And so asking them, how do we define violence? How do we define the term? And the angels are saying there is a difference between what they are referring to as violence and what is um, like standing up to bullies, putting ourselves in the line of, maybe putting ourselves in the line of violence is not the same as violence is the point that they're trying to make. And they want to just get that on the table before we are able to move forward. And then the next step, the way that they're defining violence, and I might butcher this, but it feels something like, um, enacting force, either physical, uh, psychological, emotional, mental, enacting some kind of force on another presence or series of presences to achieve an outcome. And that's what they're stressing on as violence today because we don't want to fall into a pattern of simply thinking of violence as a physical action when there are so many forms of violence. And what they're saying upstairs is that the intention behind the violence really truly matters. The intention of what someone is trying to do and what the other party is trying to do. And they're saying the big focus of what violence is really comes from the intention to either um, control or um, stop uh, an action. It's the intention to assert your own force to make something happen uh, and there's something I'm missing and it has to do with what is supposed to happen or not supposed to happen. So it's essentially taking action without regard to what is supposed to happen, just to try and make something happen that you have decided that you're going to have happen. And that can create violence in many, many forms, in many, many dimensions. So that's what we're going to go off of as violence. And they want to talk about the importance of the perspective of the outsider, either the presence who is receiving the violence or presences who are witnessing the violence. And something that they were talking about uh, on a run this morning and something that the life does before really challenging channeling sessions is we'll go for a run so the energy body has a chance to clear out with a little bit of physical support to it so i highly recommend that if you're looking for quick ways to get your energy body a little more clear a little more um it is like uh to clarify the sound of the bell within and so what the guardian angels were talking about earlier this morning was uh, an event from this life. It happened a long, long time ago, actually almost exactly 10 years ago, really almost to the day, which is fascinating, where this life uh, was living in another country and had the opportunity, was living in Africa, and had the opportunity to visit a, a village in the north end of South Africa near Kruger Park, and it was a, a Venta tribe village, and had the opportunity to stay there for a little while. And there was this event that happened a few days into the visit where one of the members of the tribe um, brought a chicken to the group of American students who were staying there and said that we were going to prepare this chicken to eat for um, the village to celebrate the Americans being there to have a sort of communal event and that someone needed to kill the chicken. It was a group of maybe 10 Americans and uh, everyone refused to kill the chicken. No one wanted to be the one to kill the chicken. And this life was the one who in the end offered to kill the chicken and now we have to talk about intention because did this life desperately want to enact pain on the chicken we've worked through this moment many many times really trying to be curious because we don't want to miss an important factor in violence we don't want to miss what uh, comes from underneath violence. So this is wonderful. Essentially, the guardian angels are giving us uh, a situation that is unequivocally violent to start to um, take it apart. 
I don't think that this life desperately wanted to hurt the chicken, desperately wanted to hurt anybody. So why did this life volunteer to be the one to kill a chicken? It doesn't feel like it was for the sake of violence itself. It feels like this life maybe really wanted to um, maybe please the people that she was interacting with, maybe wanted to um, have them think well of her, have them think well of the group, have um, some kind of good interaction come out of what felt like a very tense uh experience a very suddenly unpleasant experience in the group in the small community that she had come to affiliate herself with referring to self in the third person because that's how the angels are referring to this life uh, so that feels like a pretty strong intention it feels like this life wanted this situation to go as smoothly as possible for herself mostly but also for the group probably and was willing to take what uh, were some pretty violent actions in order to get to what she saw as the goal. Now, the question always comes down to what was the actual assignment? What was actually supposed to happen? And probably what was supposed to happen was this life was supposed to join the other Americans and saying, no, thank you. We'd rather not kill a chicken. We'd rather uh, have something else to eat than go through this experience of violence clearly was not the choice this life made and so what ended up happening in that experience this is fun i normally don't share personal stories but what ended up happening was this life did kill the chicken and it was very traumatic all the other americans saw it and now we switch the focus from the person who is perpetuating the violence hello to someone who is witnessing the violence we don't really have the chickens perspective we didn't get to have that conversation it also doesn't feel like that's what the angels want to focus on now so we're not going to look too hard at the chicken we are going to talk about one of the other americans who was by that point a close friend of this life we're going to call her m and m uh was a vegan, was an animal rights activist, and was very distressed by witnessing the chicken die at the hands of her friend. For M, it was an incredibly violent action from someone who she had not defined as a violent person, from someone who she had defined as a safe person, a calm person, uh, certainly not someone who would intentionally bring harm to another living presence. So, for M, it was one of the most violent actions she had ever witnessed. And in that way, what the guardian angels are saying, which I've never really thought about, for her, it was violent. Even taking aside whatever the intentions of the violent actor were, it did violence to her to witness it. She was injured by witnessing that event. And the injury was real. And it's not any of our job to say that it's not a valid injury, that it's not a valid trauma, that it's not a valid hurt. Because there was violence to her as a witness based on her past experiences, based on what she had come into that situation already having defined as violent. So we have to be aware of this when we talk about violence. Even sometimes when there are circumstances where the perpetuator is uh, has intentions that are not violent intentions, even in circumstances where the presence who is having the violence done to them isn't necessarily defining it as violent in a traumatic way, the viewer can still have an experience of violence. And probably, <laughs> this is not the example I would have given, but what the angels are saying is probably it's like that when um, there are images or videos, um, recorded art of people who are consenting to act out violence. For example, in plays, when there is stage combat or films, when there is stage violence. It's two actors. Everybody who was in that situation was aware that they would be portraying violence. They all presumably agreed to it. They all stepped into that situation to portray violence. So it's possible for those presences, they came out of that situation not feeling like a situation had been perpetuated upon them that was violent. But for viewers, that is a violent situation, especially if you're not thinking in your moment, in your conscious mind, 
these are actors. This is not real violence. If a viewer is caught up in the story of a moment, to them, it, their bodies, their souls, their... Um, it's the term, it's like their connection to reality responds to that violence as if it were being perpetuated by non-consenting parties right in front of them. So, <laughs> what the angels are first trying, I think, to get us to come to the point to is there are so many facets of what violence means and how violence affects everybody who is touched by it. And what it really comes down to from one perspective is the intention. Did the actor intend to be violent? But it also comes down to all of the perspectives of everybody who is touched by the violence. <sighs> So it's a very big topic that we've come into today, and that is incredibly exciting. Now, the guardian angels want to circle around to the question of what is its source? And we also have to dissect this, because what the guardian angels are reminding us of is that every presence you can see with your eyes, presences like this host life, presences like presumably the host lives who uh, are consuming this content, who are watching this video, we are made up of multiple multiple parts. There is the life itself, the thing that we can touch, the thing we can see with our eyes, the thing we can hear with our ears, the life. The life that will end at some point. All of us do. And if that's a surprise to you, uh, you've got some more surprises coming at you in this video. Another element is the soul. And souls, especially in this era, come and go, but they are essentially the thing we cannot see with our eyes that carry what we would consider uh, the majority of personality, the majority of uh, inspiration for the life. They are essentially, oh, interesting. So for filming, I use a transmitter and a receiver. This is a transmitter. Connected to the camera is a receiver. That receiver works similarly to how a soul in the life works. It is something that catches messages and then transmits them to the life. So maybe the camera is the life. This transmitter is like the guardian angels, big presences upstairs who are responsible either for the soul in the life, for the life itself, for a group or community that the life represents. The guardian angels send the message to the soul. The soul sends the message into the life, and then the life acts on it. That's the way the system is set up to work. There are lots of breakdowns that happen. Sometimes the guardian angels don't send the message to the exact right place because it's much harder than you might think. Sometimes the soul misinterprets it and sends the wrong signal into the life. And often what happens is the life feels a signal coming in. It feels like something that is intimidating. It feels like something that is nearly impossible. It feels like something that is outside of the frame of reference for what the life has previously understood to be possible, and then the life doesn't carry out the action. Those are some possibilities for how it can go. All this to say, every single one of these points is a point from which the intention to create violence or the receptive uh, behavior to violence can come. Sometimes the guardian angels are wanting uh, something to happen regardless of the soul plan and are willing to use force to get it. Often what we see is guardian angels who are responsible for another presence are actually the ones who make this happen. We see this for a lot of clients. Oh, interestingly, maybe even C is a good example of this, who again, a wonderful client. Her sessions have so many fascinating components, but she has a pattern in her life where guardian angels who are responsible for other people who she has soul contracts with, who she is supposed to have relationships with in this life, their guardian angels will enact what is essentially violent violence against her life, hoping to create some kind of change for the presences who they are responsible for. Now, it's still violence because it still damages her life. It's still something that is against her soul plan, but it is being sent by a guardian angel. While we think of guardian angels as really, for the most part, presences who send down good things, it does matter how committed they are to not only their responsible presence's soul plan, but to the soul plans of everyone they're related to, everyone they're interacting with. And that is not always um, 
an interest that they are willing to develop or they are interested in developing. So there is violence from guardian angels, make no mistake about it. Another facet of violence that can come from guardian angels, someone is saying, and this is true, we've seen this in a lot of client sessions, is when the life that the guardian angels are responsible for has a lesson that they are just not learning and they are really resisting learning that lesson sometimes guardian angels will send down events for the life that could be described as violent that are sometimes physically painful sometimes emotionally painful sometimes mentally painful uh, challenging situations that we might define as violent that came directly from the guardian angels in the hopes that it will propel that person into clarity of the lesson or if not in that quick kind of way at least open the door so they can begin to walk the path of understanding that lesson we would describe it as violent much like m would describe the killing of the chicken as violent because it was um, an experience that changed her changed how she saw her friend changed how she saw uh, the community that we had been interacting with there we go and I don't know wh whose guardian angels had set that up. We always have to assume it's us. We always have to assume that it was for us and that we messed it up. So almost certainly this life was supposed to say, no, I'm not going to kill that chicken. And then all of the things that spun off of that traumatic event would not have happened. But that's not how it played out. Wonderful that we still have opportunities to learn lessons as we continue forward in life. Now, so the guardian angels are essentially moving down the line of who can be responsible for violence. So we acknowledge there are even higher powers that we haven't yet addressed. Hopefully we'll circle around to them because now they're talking about the soul. And sometimes souls will enact violence. And that's a trickier thing. Maybe we're going to skip back to that and get to the life and then circle back around because that's much harder than I thought it would be to translate. The lives, it's easy. The lives are, for the most part, intersections of the genetic material, the experiences that have been experienced previously in this life, and also the experiences of the past life of the soul that is most often in that life. And so the life can um, be a source of violence, sometimes just based on what has been done to them in that life. And this is not woo-woo out there, um, topic it's well known that people who have had violence enacted upon them will enact violence upon others in a cycle of trauma and so in that way often it can be a source from the life itself even if the guardian angels in the soul are saying no no don't enact force on other presences live your soul plan leave other people alone this is not what you're supposed to be doing sometimes the body really is so stuck in that immediate trauma that it will be the source of violence and interesting so now they're talking about the past lives and they're talking about the soul <laughs>